Good morning again. How are you all? Good. Um, I am Adrian Bogans. I am the assistant principal for RPM, Reaching Potential Through Manufacturing, one of those daughter programs that Denise just spoke about. I'm in Augusta, Georgia, so I'm a lot closer than Denise is. So if you can't visit Denise, you're more than welcome to visit Augusta. Um, a lot of the things that we do are a lot the same. We're with Textron though, instead of Southwire. Um, Textron, EasyGo are the golf cart manufacturers. And this is Philip Bowman. He is the director of operations. And so RPM falls under his jurisdiction. We have a couple of uh, Textron campuses in Augusta and RPM is one of them. And so um, we fall under his jurisdiction, if you will. Did you want to say something? Right, right. Okay. I, I don't know if I say anything right quick. Um, <laughs> first, uh, thank you. Thank you all for, for allowing me to be here. I want to thank Southwire and Denise. Uh, I know it was the kind of the benchmark and it sounds like we need to get back in there and kind of see what you guys are up to now. So we'll, we'll definitely um, connect. Uh, as far as the operation goes, uh, the easiest way to say would be ditto. Um, three operations, as she was kind of walking through, it was like, no wonder ours looks like that. Um, so thank you, and, and we'll get back to doing some more of that. Uh, again, Philip Bowman, Director of Operations for Textron Specialized Vehicles. Um, mostly we, we build power sports. Um, easy go golf carts are what we're most known for. Um, anything you buy at Bass Pro Shop, with the tracker logo and wheels. We don't build bolts, boats, but uh, we, we build all the um, wheeled vehicles, ATVs, side-by-sides, um, Arctic Cat snowmobiles. And then if you've been to an airport and you look out the window, everything that is moving around that's not an aircraft, um, primarily we build that um, for all the ground support equipment. That's built in Cartersville, Georgia. So I have, uh, have three factories uh, in Augusta um, one, and an RPM, which is the high school. So uh, last year we built about 115,000 golf carts. A brand new one every two minutes rolls off the end of one of my assembly lines. Um, imagine, well, the one you see out there, that one took a little more work, so about every five minutes we'll, we'll produce another one of those. Um, and every one of those vehicles that we built last year, every one that we built the year before that, and for the last seven years, got its start at RPM with the students building sub-assemblies that go into those vehicles. So anywhere in the world, um, I, I tell the students, you go anywhere in the world, if you see the EasyGo logo, your DNA, your thumbprint is in that vehicle and you can have some pride in it, right? It would not be there, it would not be running if you hadn't played a part in it. So from the business success side, 359 graduates so far. We, we're expecting another 15, thanks to Dr. Bogans and the staff um, on the education side. So we'll get another 15 in May. Uh, in the last two years, I've made offers to about 70% of those graduates, um, just over 70%. Um, it's hard to track how many offers we've made because if they don't accept it, right, it, it kind of falls out of our system. But um, I interview every one of them. Uh, my staff does, um, put them through a round table. Dr. Bogans and, my, and some other support groups kind of prepare them for resumes and interviews. And so we do a panel style interview. Uh, they're scared to death. They're sitting in front of five or six managers. And uh, my staff has been trained to conduct that interview in a way that makes them feel comfortable. So very conversational, very, um, not really getting into the technical piece of it, right? Technical skills can be trained. Um, human behaviors are much harder to ingrain into those. So you're looking for attitude and that smile, the, the personal brand, attendance, right? I have, a, I have an entire presentation about the 10 Ps, um, Phillips 10 Ps. My name starts with a P, so I made it. Anyway, seven, seven do's and three don'ts. Number one, um, without doubt, and this is kind of for the young young professionals in here, um, is to be present. If you're not there, right, you're, you will miss out on the opportunities for, that, that you would have been 
able to take advantage of. So be present. It's also the number one um, reason why employees are terminated within my organization. Um, matter of fact, 51% of the, the terminations have been due to attendance, just, just not showing up. All the other reasons don't even make the halfway point. So by and far, be present um, and then be open-minded to let good things happen. So anyway, that's my lecture for you guys today. Probably heard that before. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, 135 offers accepted, or yeah, offers accepted. Um, the average rate right now is $22.26 per hour, and that's averaged over kind of the 50-ish employees that are still there that were RPM graduates. Uh, and we have RPM graduates that are RPM alum, um, that are, uh, y'all, some of y'all heard from one yesterday that's now a mechanical engineer, um, graduated through that program. I've got team leads on my staff, I've got supervisors on my staff, assemblers, machinists, welders, um, forklift drivers, all that, that are able to do that because they got their high school diploma first. So. Um, it, it's kind of it goes without saying getting your diploma, getting your degree is the most important. So um, a couple of examples of what it takes to run this. So uh, Denise gave a great breakdown. It's a complicated system to get corporate mindset to match up with an education system. Policies are different. Rules are different. We've got minors um, rather than adults and drug policies and attendant, all of that stuff is really, really complicated. And so finding the right partnership and being willing to be flexible enough in those policies and procedures, at least from the corporate side, um, I don't ask <laughs> the Richmond County Board of Education, ah, just eh, don't worry about it, uh, let's do it my way. Um, finding the, that common ground and making sure that the focus always main, remains on the student's graduation and their success. So from a business standpoint, um, that return on investment is not today, it's not tomorrow, it's next year, the following year, and then for decades to come. So getting some people to, to understand, especially from the corporate side, right? I, I can speak really well about the corporate side. Um, getting us to realize where that payoff comes from or where that, when it pays off, is difficult because there's not a magic date, there's not a super calculation. What there is is 360 um, graduates in our community that have had their lives changed because of a program like RPM, because of an alternative way to get that high school diploma and to continue on with their success. And then from a corporate side, I just have to like open the doors and I need all the help I can get. So come on over. Uh, we'll take all, any, anyone and everyone with ex some exceptions. So <laughs> yeah, I, I got to, yeah, you know, uh, somehow I got in the door, so we're good there. Um, and then last year, so we do this a very similar thing with, uh, you know, the, the signing day and the offers and the graduation. We hold our own graduation ceremony. Um, also with the school after they get their homeschool um, certificate and then we have one out at the plant uh, to kind of celebrate the students and then I'm, I'm really proud that this year for for a couple semesters I was just buying gift cards as a, um, a gift from Textron um, and this year the legal battles and everything else um, my organization gave laptops as a tool to all the graduates so that they could what they do with it you know i'm sure they're going to watch some youtube videos and all, all the stuff i would do with it um but then they can balance their checkbook and pay their bills and get continuing their education create the resume update things so as a tool to them i thought it was just more vital to continue to support that and that's kind of why we're here right it's to support students Based on what I've seen and the examples um, you guys demonstrated today, I'm really optimistic about the future. I like, finally, I, I'm the generation that doesn't think the next generation is going to destroy it. So thank you all. Yes.
Um, really optimistic. I, I mean, it's just incredible. Um, I'm kind of getting off script a little bit, but uh, I think sometimes we underestimate what young minds and that energy can actually accomplish. Um, we're the barrier because this is the way I know how to do it, or this is what I'm used to, or whatever that is. So sometimes I got to just get out of the way. Um, and then one more, and it kind of goes to the heart of my entire staff and why the RPM program is so important. Um, every year, RPM does Secret Santa, right? The kids put their, their their wish list together, right? And this is these are my sizes. This is my favorite food. I like candy bars. It's probably all mine. mine just a whole bunch of candy bars. Um, and and I typically do three. Um, I've got three children. Grab one for each of my own children, and then we kind of, except for the one that no longer lives with us, um, we do it together and as a family get them engaged in it. And this year, I got two, we got two. Um, one was a mother who had a, a young child, um, which is very close to my heart, it's my own experience. Um, well, it's my wife's experience, it's not, not so much mine. Um, you were there? I was there, but it, it was much. Uh, anyway, we'll get distracted. I'll get distracted. Um, so we got um, kind of a single mother with, with her um, toddler was one so that that ended up being two and then we got another young young gentleman I still couldn't like I haven't put a name with face and it's supposed to be secret but his wish list um, was unique to anyone I'd ever gotten and it just said um, I need love um, or I want love I think it was I need love right it didn't have cologne or clothes or shoes what he wanted was love and and at first when i read it i was like uh, this guy's like me and just gonna but it was sincere and so i gave it to my wife um lots of kind of broke her heart too and so how do you show love right that becomes really difficult how do i give someone what they ask for as as a secret santa um so we did include he had one of his favorite candy so we included that and included the gift cards and made sure he got something else but how did i how do we show love and that was that one was in the form of a letter um that my wife wrote i didn't know it it had impacted until way later and they didn't even know it was my wife that wrote it or, or me that had that kid but um showing levi support being there listening um providing an opportunity, and then just caring for, um, made the world a difference. And then months later, I heard from Dr. Bowling, someone else like, oh, there was a student, he had this letter, he went to his teacher and had it laminated, and he would, when things started getting out of place, or kind of his world would get a little crazy, he'd kind of retreat in and read it and calm down. And um, you're probably a better example of, or have seen better examples of it, but um, it was just, touching, right? And that's what RPM and the South Wired 12 for Life, oh, my pens, anyway. Um, that's what they're for, right? To provide others the absolute best opportunity to succeed. Whatever tool it is, however form it comes in, um, we created a welding program and we've heard about all these other programs. It's all in an attempt to make the next generation, to make students, just give them the opportunities. Let them make some choices for themselves and kind of excel at what they, they want to do. So that's kind of it for me. Um, just want to again say thank you. Um, thank you to Dr. Bogans and her staff. Um, it's a great partnership. Thank you again to Southwire. We'll be down there um, shortly. Got a new manager over there. Uh, he and I will make a, make a road trip. Um, all the people that have kind of had that vision um, and the, the support that we get from communities and groups like this where, hey, you, you got this, you can do it, you're doing the right things. So um, just humbly want to say thank you and then turn it back over. Um, every time I think about that Christmas letter story, I just start tearing up. So, but, um, but yes, it, it was extremely meaningful. Um, to him and to me, um, 
I'm a seasoned educator. I've been teaching probably longer than most of you have been alive. And so um, when I got to RP, I thought I had seen it all. Um, I was even a, a, a professional development consultant. I had traveled the country helping big schools, little schools, rural schools, urban schools, and everything in between. And when I got to RPM, it was definitely something extremely different. And, but that's what our kids need. Our kids need the different. Um, some of the other things that we do differently, um, Philip talked about how we, um, the, uh, Levi was supported individually. Um, some other things we do to support students. Uh, we have a mental health counselor on staff um, who comes in three to four times a week. Um, kids are going through a lot. You know, y'all are doing some amazing things, all the things here, but you don't do it without maybe other issues going on at home. You know, so our kids are the same. Uh, so we have that mental health facility, the mental health counselor. We also have a family action team to help with um, issues that are going on within the family. If the family is struggling with something, uh, we have, uh, it's a conglomeration of organizations within the community that are already doing things like helping people pay utility bills, helping people pay rent. And so instead of the family having to go around to each of those organizations asking for help, the organizations come into the building, we present the case and every organization tells us what they can do for that family and we go ahead and get that process started to make it easier on the family. Because surely if I can't pay my light bill, I probably don't have gas to get all around town to do all of these things, right? So um, it just helped me look at education and families and the things that we do a lot differently. Um, I love school, um, just finished my doctorate a couple of years ago. And one of the things that uh, I found interesting was that um, one of the biggest indicators of good school systems and good schools is the home ownership level of the community around it. Well, how do we create homeowners? We have to have good jobs and economies that are conducive to homeowners. And when we do the work that we do, the, the, all of the things that you all are, inter are interested in and are doing, the mechanics, the automotive, the, the, the horticulture, the construction, all of those things lead to good paying jobs that lead you to homeowners that feed the school system. So really as educators, it's in our best interest to have programs like this to feed the economy, to, to build better people, but better communities for the future. Any questions, concerns, or anything that I did not cover, or Philip did not cover? All right. Thank you so much.